my name is Vladimir. I'm here to introduce my company. We are a mobile game developer called Creative Mobile. And uh, I believe we're one of the smallest and youngest companies represented here today. Uh, but when you think about it, when we started this business uh, a little over two years ago, we didn't have anything at all. We had a tiny team of three colleagues and friends. We didn't have any experience publishing games. We didn't have any relevant industry connections. We didn't have any budget, any money. Yet somehow, in, during these two years, we managed to get our games downloaded to over 80 million devices. And the company has grown to over 60 employees in our main office in Tallinn, in Estonia. And uh, there's quite a lot of people working remotely or freelancing or doing outsourced work for us. And uh, I'm going to tell you really briefly how we did it, what we're doing now, and what we're planning to do in the future. Uh, like I said, we're a game developer. We're focused on Android. And this may sound strange even now when Android is mainstream, but general consensus among game developers is that the money is on the App Store, on the Apple App Store, because all the rich guys are still buying iPads and iPhones even after Apple proved in court that Samsung phones and tablets are basically the same thing. Still, iOS remains the platform of choice for most mobile developers. And three years ago, focusing on Android was a crazy idea because this was the new platform, the awkward kid. There were just a couple of devices on the market, and people buying these devices were mostly tech geeks. And tech geeks are not the easiest audience to monetize. And um, the market was very small, but we saw the opportunity because the big name publishers were busy selling their games on the App Store, and Android market was very much empty. Uh, those big name publishers who tried to get there didn't really succeed because they applied the same business models that worked on consoles, on iOS, and that didn't work on Android. So we thought that instead of trying to challenge them in the App Store, we're going to focus on the new platform and try to win some ground while the competition is weak. And if this takes off, if this, this Android platform takes off, we're going to be in an advantage, and we'll be able to compete with bigger companies. And uh, this is very much the way it played out. We started by developing games and experimenting with business models. And in the beginning, we failed, as expected. We put a lot of effort, put our soul into games that didn't sell. Yet eventually, we arrived at this formula of very simple games targeted at the widest audience possible that allow players to uh, have sh short sessions of very intense gameplay that can, be, that can happen in a bus, at school, during a boring speech at no conference, for example, if that's the case. Doesn't matter. And these games should also give players some space to progress, to develop their skills, and compete with other players. And uh, right now, this kind of uh, a strategy many developers use. But a year and a half ago, it was kind of a big discovery for us. And the first game where we implemented this strategy was Basketball Shot 3D. It got over 8 million downloads. And most of the downloads came at the time when the market was much smaller than now. And this is where we understood we we're up to something, and we can scale it. And the next big breakthrough product for us was Drag Racing, or Nitro Nation Drag Racing, as the full name of the game, which got 60 million downloads on Android alone. And we continued to build on the success. We released various ports and editions of the game. And this added further 20 million downloads. And among these spin-off games, there's the iOS version of Drag Racing, which was number one game in 50 plus countries when it launched in the App Store. There's the sport bike edition of Drag Racing, which was in support, the second highest grossing app in the US Android market. So we did pretty well. Why? Of course, of course our plan of being the first of, on the new platform worked for us. It gave us the advantage. Uh, and also, being broke 
not having any money in the beginning was a great advantage and a privilege. Because when you're broke, it inspires creativity. And some people invest this creativity into, into, into coming up with mind-blowing presentations and taking these presentations to conferences and trying to convince other people to invest into their idea. But we are of a different type. We're stereotypical, shy, Northern Europeans. So instead of talking to people and trying to get some investments, we started playing with the marketing tools that didn't require a marketing budget. We experimented a lot with game icons, game titles, descriptions, promo images, screenshots, trying to figure out how to get the player's attention during this very short attention span, how to grab these players and make them download our games and stay in our games. And we got pretty good at it. And uh, eventually, when we launched drag racing, we got $40,000 on the next day after launch without doing any marketing activity at all. No press releases, no ads, no incentivized things, those, no cross promotion, nothing. And this is something that is in our DNA. We're doing a lot of market research right now. We focus a lot on how players see our games, how they discover our games. Another thing that's in our DNA is how we work with the community. We focus a lot on getting feedback from players and giving something back. And uh, as a result, we have over a million likes on Facebook already. It's a million seventy thousand or something like that. We have a community organized forum of 50,000 members. And this is what we continue doing. We focus a lot on building the loyal player base rather than squeezing every dollar out of them immediately through some tight monetization. And there's something else about us that is important and a critical factor in what we do and where we got. We are based in an interesting place called, called Estonia, which is south to Finland. And we have pretty good infrastructure there. We have a very business-friendly law system. We have a very lively startup scene. And uh, most importantly, we have uh, relatively low living expenses. So we can hire top talent for a fraction of what we would have to pay in San Francisco or in London, for example, or in Finland. And moreover, we've established strong connections with the Russian gaming scene, Ukrainian gaming scene, and to a certain extent, Belarus. And this is where we go, outsourcing our projects, headhunting, and so on. And uh, speaking about where this got us, uh, our first full year ended with around 2.7 million euros in revenue and very nice profitability. Uh, this year, we're looking at around 7 to 8 million euros, depending on how the last two months go. And uh, for next year, it's unpredictable. We are in a heat-driven industry. The, the most important part is that we're keeping our costs low. We're investing into new projects. And uh, the outlook is pretty optimistic. Now, what are we going to do with, all, with this money? Of course, we're investing in things that work. We're developing our Nitro Nation franchise, raising new games. Uh, updating existing games. I think we released 40 to 50 updates to the ori original Android game. And this has allowed us to increase our revenues by a factor of three or four. Uh, this is something that is very easy for us, and we're taking on bigger, bigger challenges, making more ambitious games. Uh, of course, we are also working on games that are not related to drag racing, just to be in touch with different segments of the audience, see what trends are there, how we can manipulate these trends, how we can see what game mechanics work and what don't. Of course, we're publishing games and help other, publish, help other developers publish their games because this is a natural thing for us to do. Uh, we've started a social department within Creative Mobile, which focuses entirely on making social games for Facebook and other platforms and bringing games that work on mobile to Facebook. And uh, another important part of our strategy is cooperation with brands. We're doing this successfully in drag racing. They want to do more of it because we see games as very interesting, very valuable media properties. Because when we have several million players in our games, and we have some pretty good analytics backing this game up, and we can see exactly who these people are, what age they are, where are they from, are they interested in cars or sports or whatever, and we can tar target ads to these people based on these analytics, we can create some very interesting uh, propositions for advertisers. And they're starting to understand it because there's lots of money in TV advertising at the moment, but there's a lot of time spent in mobile. And there is a huge difference 
between the relation of time spent by users and money spent by advertisers. And they begin to understand this, and we have very, very big expectations uh, towards working with uh, brands to create interesting experience for, for us, for our users, and monetizing our ways in our games in creative ways. Uh, I think it's all I got to say. Time's up. No time for questions. But if any of my talk sparked any interest, I'm easy to find. Thank you very much for listening. That's all for me.